Over the last eight years, we've seen some progress, but I was on a panel last week, um, just last week, and they were rattling off all the numbers in newsrooms and uh, minority representation in newsrooms, as well as digital properties, and they're, they're, so dis uh, they're just disappointing. I mean, they're, they're still shocking, shockingly low. I mean, people still tend to hire people that represent the voices that they're used to seeing, right? And they're, and they're trying to make a, an effort now, I think, to reach out into to black and brown communities to bring them in. When you don't feel listened to in an organization and when you don't feel represented or when it starts to feel like the organization that you're in is not an idealistic place. And as journalists, we are driven by a common purpose and a common mission. You know, when you're in a newsroom that's not listening to you, or if you feel like the ideals that you entered that newsroom with are no longer the ideals of the organization that we're at in 2016, um, sticking around is really not the most, it, it's sort of just not a sustainable um, proposition. At NBC, it's, it's great to know my, my, my boss, the, the, the senior VP of news, Janelle Rodriguez, is Puerto Rican. We have Yvette Miley, one of the top managers of MBC, MSNBC, who's African American. So, you know, I see some women at the higher levels. I've always had uh, women mentors. I've been lucky in that respect. But I do worry that as the newsrooms per se shrink, uh, where do we go and how do we keep having that power? The key is finding them and, um, and training them and, and um, keeping in touch with them and mentoring them mm -hmm. um, because otherwise that's how the pipeline blows up. Mm -hmm. you, lose, mm -hmm. you, you lose touch with people, you don't make any investments in people and you know they leave the industry. My hope would be that women, when they are in positions of power, feel a similar responsibility for inclusion. Um, and so I've kind of talked about it pretty publicly that when one group is left behind, then all groups are left behind. And that if that we talk about being the only at the table, but you are at the table. And so being there comes with great responsibility, right? Um, I'm a, I'm a member of NABJ. I'm not black. I'm an Indian who was raised in Puerto Rico. Why am I a member? Because I look at my newsroom and I feel like this is the issue of this moment and I need to do something about it. So if I can do that, then why can't they do that, right? I think it's really important uh, to find people who you've worked with or who do similar things uh, that you do who have a real appreciation for, um, have a real appreciation for like the absurdity of the industry in some ways, who can make you feel sane when you feel like everything is crazy, um, who can give you good advice about career moves, who you, who value your advice, um, and um, who, you, who has, is real, are who are really smart about journalism. But one thing, that I discovered that has been wonderful is we can sort of help ourselves in non-traditional ways. And what I mean by that is that, for example, in our section, when I started to notice that there were other people in our organization, in, in NBC, that were Latino who were interested, maybe they had never had a byline, but they said to me, hey, you know, you have this great section, NBC Latino, I'd like to, and I'm like, do it, like right now. You could be 22, you've never had a byline, send me, send me a personal essay if you want, send me a Voices article, which is something a little easier to start with, and send me a few pictures, send me a little, and we'll put it on, on our section. And what we started to do, what I've realized is that you can sort of build organically a cadre of supporters and colleagues that can sort of help you put together a family. Like have a couple cheerleaders in your group, have someone who's gonna keep it real with you, like there's some, there's some, some of your friends will be like, oh, that's great, that's great, and you need those people, but you need somebody who's going to keep it real with you. And you also need people in your cohort that, are, that do not look like you or necessarily think like you. On metrics, I would say that if an organization can look at Chartbeat and see you all over it, I think you're going to be pretty safe as well. And your, your, your career trajectory is going to be um, on the up. Um, and there are many, many ways of making your presence felt in those metrics, and it is not just the byline. I would actually argue that the people who change photos and miraculously cause a story to soar, or a headline, or um, identify new markets and audiences are among the most valuable in our newsrooms right now. And 
you know, my experience, again, I talked about identity-driven coverage, is just that innately we have an ability to appeal across identities because we straddle multiple identities. Um, that is a real asset, and I think if you can make the numeric case and with your friends in the ad sales department go out um, and make something of that, then it, it, that just feels like where um, the success in journalism mm -hmm. is right now. My dad gave me some of the best advice. He told me very early on if I wanted to be an entrepreneur that the first thing I needed to do was learn how to sell. And he said, because if you learn how to sell, you'll be okay for the rest of your life. Whatever, if you can take an idea and you know how to sell it, you'll be good. So whether you're in business or you're in journalism and you're having to pitch your, your editor, if you understand how to sell and package an idea, um, you can go a long way in life.